je parle français, excusez-moi, même si euh, la, les conférences seront données en anglais. Euh, et bon, je peux le faire en français. Euh, donc, la première conférence, elle est dédiée à, à Riccardo Morandi, cet ingénieur euh, italien euh, qui, est, qui, a, qui joue un rôle très important dans l'histoire du, du, du génie civil et dans la conception des ponts, surtout, mais pas seulement des, des ponts, comme nous, allons, comme nous allons voir ce soir. Merci. Euh, et euh, elle sera donnée par euh, euh, Mme Marcia Mar euh, Mirandola, qui est, Marandola, qui est euh, chercheuse à l'Université euh, euh, La Sapienza à Rome. Marcia Marandola est euh, ingénieure, difficile à traduire, ingénieure et ville, comme mm -hmm. on dit euh, en Italie. Euh, C'est une figure qui se situe un petit peu à mi-chemin entre le génie civil et euh, l'architecture et euh, elle est maintenant euh, donc elle a fait euh, sa, euh, sa recherche euh, à l'université Tor Vergata à Rome euh, donc sous la direction euh, du professeur Poretti que nous avons déjà euh, eu la, 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 la possibilité ou l'occasion de, de voir il y a deux semaines et euh, elle fait maintenant euh, elle travaille maintenant à l'université euh, La Sapienza de Rome voilà Thank you very much for this invitation. Thank you to all the ENAC, the Professor Roberto Gargiani, Cyril Bayon, and uh, the Professor Mutoni for this presentation. And uh, I will speak about Riccardo Morandi and his role as engineer. Pierluigi Nervi and Riccardo Morandi were the undisputed protagonists of Italian engineering in the 20th century. These two brilliant designers who were inevitably oops, compared and often competed with each other through two opposite views of construction extolled the use of concrete. If Nervi was the master of ferrocement, Morandi pursued the primacy of pre-stressed reinforced concrete, which from 1950 on became his prime construction technique. Both believed that the greatest economy of form and material was the precondition for harmony and functional effectiveness. Nervi developed a pictorial architecture modulated by slender membranes and vibrant textures Morandi just opposed massive block, sometimes audaciously, so as to emphasize the reliance of force and weight, with surprisingly tactile effects and sculptural tensions, capable of dialoguing with the natural landscape. The bridge over the Venezuelan lagoon of Maracaibo the pavilion for Torino Esposizioni in the Parco del Valentino, the viaduct on the Fiumarella in Catanzaro, the works that made Morandi world famous are distinguished by an expressive flair backed by technical precision, charged with a visionary inside. Qualities that belay that belie the stereotype of an engineer, loyal to the canon and established rules, a conformist and a prisoner of conventional solutions. Morandi was a rare example of an original artist who devoted himself to civil engineering. He approached each project as a challenge, requiring him to experiment with the hidden potential of reinforced concrete and its capacity for technical and figurative invention. To understand this singular artist and engineer, we will pass briefly in review his scientific and cultural formation, his early projects, and touch on few of the works which I consider particularly significant. Born in Rome in 1902, 
Morandi graduated in 1927 from the local school of applied engineering and specialized in electrical engineering. An impatient student of Professor Aristide Giannelli, a celebrated specialist in the construction of bridges and the large construction, he soon became his collaborator. As an engineer, he made his debut in the reconstruction of historic buildings, especially churches, in Sicily and Calabria, which had suffered damage in the 1902 earthquake. Direct contact with Renaissance and Baroque buildings with damaged domes, vaults, apses, built with multiple and variously sophisticated craft techniques, proved a decisive phase of its formation, revealing an aesthetic dimension of construction that was to captivate him to all his life. In 1930, he returned permanently to Rome, having gained an extensive fund of experience in the use of reinforced concrete applied to reconsolidation and reconstruction. Consequently, when he began working freelance in the capital, he designed almost exclusively reinforced concrete frames applied to residential buildings. His talent immediately emerged through unusual and original solutions to technical problems seemingly of no great significance. His ability to design within buildings was given full expression in 1935 with the projection room of the Cinema Augustus, skillful embedded in the basement of the 19th century building on Corso Vittorio Emanuele in Rome. The project brought him into contact with Italo Gemini, who was to become one of his most important clients, a leading entrepreneur in entertainment and the Italian movie industry. Gemini commissioned him to build a number of cinemas in Rome. They included the famous Cinema Maestoso on the Via Pianova, a unique structure with three stories of housing resting on massive pre-stressing concrete beams with span of 45 meters cover the auditorium. We can see in this image the beam of 45 meters and on the top the three store. Again in these early years Morandi also embarked on his long and fruitful collaboration with the Bomprini Barotti Delfino, BPD, company of Coleferro, a manufacturer of explosive and other chemical products. The central role played by Morandi in the conception and construction of the factory city of Coleferro, 1935, BPD's headquarters, 40 kilometers south of Rome, is crucial and little known. Thanks to the partnership between the engineer and the company, Coleferro is one of the rare instances of a modern Italian architect design city. In this image we can see the design realized by Morandi. He designed the, the street and the principal building. And in this image we can see how Coleferro was realized by Morandi from the 1930 to the 1970. From the 30s on, Morandi professional work included experiments with pre-stress devices, the results of which took a practical form only in 1944 with the first of a numerous six patents for pre-stress devices. They exploited the heating of the iron rivers and their consequent elongation when traversed by an electrical current. In short, they used the Joule effect. Five years after, this first device, which was not very successful commercially, Morandi patented a more conventional system that proved much more functional. 
The patent applied on 11 June 1949 for the tensioning and blocking of reinforcement bar for priestess concrete structure was an explicit elaboration of French and Belgian patents. Morandi himself referred repeatedly to the devices by Eugène Fresinet and Gustave Magnel <coughs> modified to simplify and facilitate the application of pre-stressing in situ. In this way we can see the jack for pre-stressing device that is very similar to the system uh, Fresinet. The pre-stressing system that the Morandi researched with the Giovanetti company in Florence were exclusively systems that used unbounded cables believed to the most practical. After years of experimentation and single simple demonstration frames, the first pre-stress reinforced concrete bridge built by Morandi was over the Elsa River, river at the Canneto in 1949 to 50 in an area near San Mignato, Empoli. The project presented by Morandi envisaged a single rectilinear span with a theoretical length of 40 meters, resting on a static support scheme, namely one consisting of a simple supported beam resting on two abutments previously built out of concrete. A simple project consisting of 40 <coughs> blocks cast in situ, which was to be the first of a long series of works in pre concrete, mainly bridges. And this was also one of the first bridge realized in Italy in pre concrete. The San Nicola Bridge, built across the Arno in Florence in 1946 as the result of a competition, brought Morandi to national prominence. Until then, he had enjoyed a solid reputation, but he had not spread beyond the building contractors in Rome. The success of a known Rome-based engineer astonished to the other participants in the competition, prestigious designers, mostly from Tuscany, including Giovanni Michelucci, the most famous architect in Florence. <coughs> the bridge resolved as a single span embedded in a abutment at either end is characterized by the simple synthetic profile of a pure constructional clarity. Just seven years after <coughs> his first bridge in priestess reinforced concrete, in 1957, Morandi won the international competition for a bridge over the Lagoon of Maracaibo, so attaining an international reputation and measure professional success, the result of years of hard and unremitting effort. To better grasp the significance of the Great Venezuela Bridge, it is useful to look an early small building by Morandi, which demonstrates its constant pursuit of tactile tensions and dynamic structures. In 1954, Morandi built a thermal power station at Civitavecchia on the coast 100 kilometers north of Rome. It was the largest thermal generating plant in central Italy, made possible by the ERP funds allocated by the United States to foster economy recovery in Italy after the war. In this project, the United States not only provided machinery, but also sent the architectural plans drafted by Gilbert Associated, a company of professionals engineering specializing in industrial organization with offices in Philadelphia, Washington and New York. But the project forwarded was a scheme for the assembly of individual functional parts rather than a true architectural project. The building of the power plant were merely represented as the outlines of buildings without any architectural qualities, simple volumes to house the equipment. In the case of most of the built structures of the power station 
Morandi confined himself to checking their structural correctness without intervening in the architectural decision, but the area of the core bunkers was wholly designed by him. And in this image we can see the redesign of this canopy by Morandi. In their design, the function determined the structure, and Morandi clearly sought to attain the form most closing, consisting with their use. The transport of coal on conveyor belts that sloped from the loading bay to the crushing tower and finally into the power station. The geometry of the design was influenced by the sloping lines of the two conveyor belts, with the result that the canopy, and we can see the image of the canopy, and the crushing tower replicated its outline. Morandi himself said that the loading station and the tower were designed in such a way as to respect the power for expression determined by the enormous oblique lattice work. So that the lattice work tower station complex was the result of a single architectural conception. The series of design constraints stimulated Morandi's creative talent to make use of every apparent limitation to develop a coherent and rational structures, highly expressive and therefore able to avoid all sense of contrivance in the composition. The result is a work with an abstract design, a symbolic light bolt, hardened and frozen in attribute, futuristic in style, to technology, the miracle of electricity. This is certainly a, mi a mere work compared to his major projects as an engineer, but it enabled us to grasp the skill and imagination of the designers as well as the expert technician and builder. The apex of Morandi's professional career was in Rashid in 1957 by his win in the international competition contract for the construction of the bridge across the lagoon of Maracaibo in Venezuela. Undoubtedly his most famous work, nine kilometers long, it crosses one of the world's major commercial trade routes, traversed by the great oil tankers sailing from Venezuela. The first competition was held by the Venezuela government in 1956, and we can see the first project. Then cancelled in favor of a second competition contract, but already in the first competition, the jury had expressed the interest of Morandi's project. The constraints of the project were then more closely defined, and Morandi won the competition with a consortium of Venezuelan and German companies. This project also had to be altered for a second time due to changes in the political context, in particular the change of government in 1958, which led to further alterations to the expressive project, such as the consequent suppression of the railway line that was to have been carried over the bridge and the modifications to the requirement for the portion of the navigation channel. No longer a single span, 420 meters wide, but five spans, 235 meters wide, with <coughs> the road deck raised 50 meters above the mean free level of the lake. In this project, the biggest the problem was not the length of the bridge, <coughs> but the need to ensure the continuous and simultaneous transit of large oil tankers and world and outward bound. For the bridge, Morandi adopted different systems of pylons. For the small and medium sized spans, from 22 to 42, he used simple vertical types in the bottom of this image. 
while for the spans of 85 meters he devised trestle pylons with an elegant H-shaped profile and with the vertical pillars slightly splayed. While the pylons are simply made of reinforced concrete, the horizontal girders that form the long ribbon of road were made of pre concrete, obviously to Morandi's patent. The most, and we can see another way, the most interesting system consists of the six largest pylons, each with a span of 190 meters, made up of two constructionally independent elements, a trestle of a 2x profile, 50 meters height, and an antenna. We can see the, the different system, these 2x and the antenna. and an antenna above it with a striking A-shaped profile, 92 meters height. The two elements, initially independent, are joined by a system of metal stays, which are anchored to one end of the horizontal girder by passing the vertex of the antenna and connected to the opposite end of the deck, so activating the functioning of the cable state bridge. In this case, the road deck above the pier can be treated as a continuous girder with six constraints where four supports are provided by four oblique pillars. And we can see these four pillars and the summit roads of the two X set by side, while the other two supports are assigned to the nodes of the anchorage and the metal tie roads. A sophisticated static and constraint systems, coupled with the equally elegant and refined formal design are the distinctive features of the bridge which traverses like Maracaibo standing out as a powerful work or landscape enhancement. The Venezuela achievement raised Morandi to indisputable international fame and the construction of a cable stray bridge of this size was originally a form and style expressed by the pier span system would become the hallmark of Morandi's work for major road infrastructure was configured as a truly titanic undertaking. And in this image we can see the Polcevera in which Morandi repeat in a different way the, the same system. When he was an internationally acclaimed engineer, Morandi designed a series of masterpieces in Rome including the hangars at Fiumicino, which stand out by their extraordinary formal and constructional elegance. Inside the airport, also built by Morandi, in collaboration in 1960 for the Olympic game, the Alitalia hangars are two large sheds arranged specularly, which houses the, the services. The extreme simplicity of the roof of the hangars brings out the static functioning of the system. A simple roof slab of a shed with a overhang of over 60 meters stayed at two points to the portal above and counterweighted overhead by the concrete service volume behind them. The roof is architecturally the most fascinating element, a landing perforated concrete deck with its extremities slightly upturned, supported by a row of stays anchored to soaring slender summital portals. 
it looks like a magical and surreal space where slender concrete stays germinate from metaphysical rows of portals, forming a dense network of objects with a powerful emotional charge, a work comparable to the most original forms of land art. A short distance away from the hangar, in 1958, Morandi built another equally poetic and futuristic architectural work, again for Alitalia. The Boeing 747 Maintenance Center, a single building which consists of two hangars and centers for workshop for a total of 470,000 square meters. The originality of the solution, as always in Morandi, grew out of the function, the sinus form of the geometric section of the hangar elegantly retraces the curvilinear outline of the airliner it, wa it was meant to house. This means that the morphology of the aircraft hangar was suggested by that of the plane, with a consequent very close bond between function and formal expression. On a simple rectangular plane, the structure can be considered as consisting of two separate volumes, albeit perfectly fused in a three-dimensional geometry. A first simple parallelepiped volume, which houses the fuselage and nose of the aircraft, and a second box-shaped volume with a catenary profile that houses the tail of the plane, where the roof is sharply arched, rearing dramatically. The shed of the hangar was then covered by a tensile structure of steel and concrete, shaped according to the catenary of dead loads and with anchorages at different levels. On the front of the hangar entrance, three grid cement pillars standing out as rock-like masses hold the bundles of steel roads that support the roof. Looking at these works, one is moved to wonder how did Morandi succeed in fusing the necessary technical knowledge with the astonishing visionary church as a single conception? How did they manage to match the refinement of the structural calculation with an equal aesthetic refinement? Pierluigi Nervi declared that everything that is aesthetically correct is beautiful, but Morandi believed that it is always possible to solve a problem of statics in several perfectly equivalent ways, and that it was up to the designer's sensibility to make the ultimate choice, one in which the technical factor and the architecture would be aspects of a single inseparable, inseparable reality. I have finished. <laughs> <If you. laughs> ah, chiudo. Chiudo. Merci. Um, Peut-être on va... On va passer à... Um, I, I continue in English uh, for you. Uh, we have the next lecture on Candela and Dora. First, uh, we take a moment for questions um, from uh, Morandi before switching. You know, if any of you have a question, even in French. Uh, interesting and nice presentation. I, I have just a question about, um, about uh, Ricardo Morandi and Pierluigi Nervi. We, we have shown that they belong practically to the same generation. And, but I, I would say that their attitude to, to modern technique was quite different. I have the impression that uh, Morandi was much more open to, to, to new technologies like pressing as you have uh, shown. What's the reason for this quite different attitude in your opinion? 
I think that Nervi was born in the 19th century, and then Morandi was uh, um, he study during the period in which uh, the conflict was uh, in this most important period. And I think that Morandi uh, go to the new technique and the Nervi uh, see the structural uh, beams. The Ferrocemet and the study of Nervi was were very similar to the steel structure. He studied the uh, repel the most famous uh, uh, structure in steel and uh, the way to construction uh, of Nervi was very similar to the steel construction and Morandi was um, 11 younger and then I think that Morandi was uh, Another generation, uh, most modern. <laughs> yes, I think. If I may ask another question, uh, you, you have shown very, very nicely that Morandi was really in between bridge design and structural yeah, design <laughs> and structural design in building. And this is, in my opinion, this is very interesting because uh, nowadays there are people who say. Uh, we should have engineers who are uh, who work mostly in bridge design, and we need engineers with a com completely com a different, different approach in, 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 in designing structures in, in for building. No, Andy was the same person who really was able to to do the same uh, in this completely in, in this different. Uh, do you mean that this will, could be also a reason why Morandi was more, much more open to pressurizing? Because in bridge design, it was, of sure, it was necessary to, to, to use pressurizing in the beginning, from the, from the end of the 40s and in the 50s. I don't know why, but I think that uh, he put it, his interest in this technique, and uh, he think that the precious concrete was better than the concrete was more economic and uh, he want to give a new way to the concrete uh, history and uh, he think that the uh, pre-stress concrete was better than concrete and, uh, and uh, that the concrete was uh, an, an old system and uh, the new system will be the pre-stress concrete. <laughs> He study a system, uh, he agent a system, uh, six system, then uh, I think that uh, it, it was uh, a privileged system to the construction building. And in Morandi the structure and the architecture is the same <laughs> thing. Thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> so now we move from Venezuela to Mexico. Introduction. Donc on passe maintenant à deux autres figures très importantes de la de la de l'ingénierie et de la et de la conception structurelle en architecture du XXe siècle. D'abord avec euh, un ingénieur euh, espagnol, Eduardo Torro. Nous allons voir que, néanmoins, euh, euh, Torroja, c'était aussi un excellent ingénieur qui a fait des choses vraiment remarquables. Et, et puis ensuite, nous allons euh, passer à, à Philippe Candela, qui est un personnage bien sûr très connu dans le domaine de la conception des corps. Alors, la, la prochaine présentation, ça sera le professeur euh, 
Raphaël Pacassinello, mm -hmm. qui vient de Madrid. Elle enseigne mm -hmm. à l'université des polytechniques de Madrid, mais mm -hmm. la faculté d'architecture, les ingénieurs connaissent très bien, bien sûr l'école de, de Camines, c'est la même faculté, donc elle travaille dans la même faculté, mais en, mais en architecture, et elle, elle préside aussi la fondation Torroja, euh, donc qui, est, qui, 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 qui soigne de, justement l'héritage de, de ce magnifique ingénieur. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon. Uh, I am so happy to be here with all of you uh, because, not only uh, because this lecture is in honor to the engineer, history engineering, also uh, because you have a fantastic university and uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mutoni, Thilan, Gargiani, all the, uh, the people, no? who made possible, uh, we are here, no? Okay, I am going to uh, talk about uh, these three, uh, not two, uh, three. Uh, uh, two are engineers, and they are a master builders of the concrete cell. Eduardo Torroja, Ildefonso Sánchez del Rio, um, somebody only knows, no? and Félix Candela. And uh, because we have no time to talk about all the work about these uh, fellows, um, I, I have choose some uh, concrete salt. But uh, the most important things, uh, I think, is uh, I want to walk you during the next 30 minutes through the path they follow to get their work uh, today is uh, in a golden place in our history. And this is a very important reference, not only the work, the way, because it's a different model of thinking, and I think it's a help for our futuro. Uh, no? Uh, okay. <laughs> well, um, first, I want... Uh, uh, all of us remember, bearing in mind, that it was an adventure. No? I call uh, the adventure a uh, concrete salt modern age. Uh, for me, uh, I think, no? it was uh, an adventure because uh, concrete was developing yet. Uh, and also, a uh, modern age was born. A new feeling, no? exciting feeling, no? new um, for technical, for art, for a scientific way. So, um, on the other hand, they uh, want, wanted to look for the way to change the size of the small forward plot uh, where concrete was born also shell, no? in some way. So it's a, a, a very difficult uh, way because uh, not always we know the, um, the giant, how is the structural behavior of the a big giant. Okay. Uh, uh, in Spain, Eduardo Torroja and Ildefonso Sánchez del Río were the most relevant and pioneer Spanish engineer who started to build concrete shell in the 20 decades. Uh, both studied in our university at Madrid. Eduardo Torroja uh, designed his uh, first concrete shell in the 1925. But, uh, as you know, all uh, the most famous uh, concrete cells by Eduardo Torroja are uh, three. No? It's uh, Mercado de Algez Market of Algeciras uh, in the 1933, and uh, Hipódromo de la Zarzuela uh, at Madrid, and uh, also the Fronton Recoletos at Madrid. 
Well, the way, the model of thinking, the way by Torroja, followed by Torroja, was a scientific way, always technical way. The history of the architecture and engineering is a technical history always. No? Okay. It was a scientific way. And I explain, and, uh, in the 20 decades, it was so difficult to dimension, to calculate, to uh, build, uh, to think about the process of construction uh, of this new uh, structural form. So in Germany, Dischenhoff uh, was uh, the first. No? And uh, Dirkichon and Wedman, no? uh, sorry because uh, my English is so so, but my German is impossible. No? Okay. <laughs> Uh, they was the first, and they um, had a method to calculate, to complicate, very complicate. Remember that they have not computer, no? and uh, Eduardo Torroja thought that he, he wanted to be free to build his own ideas. So uh, he uh, designed a model test, experimental physical model test, reduce model. And uh, in a few years, he was the, the father, a scientific father of this um, experimental test. So um, he was uh, free you know, uh, to build. And also he, uh, he make free other people to, uh, because he built a way. You know, okay. This um, market uh, at Algeciras, uh, I always explain some, uh, something important. No? Uh, always is uh, something uh, very different, uh, never built before, no? when Torroja work. Um, this uh, was the large concrete cell dome built in Spain. So it was. Uh, it was an adventure, really. Nobody uh, knows how to, to build. It is a, a spherical dome supported by eight pillars, which are situated in the um, vertex of the octagonal plan of the market. Its diameter is a 47.8 meters pound. At the top, there is an oculus uh, nine meters diameters, as the, the Pantheon uh, in Roma, <laughs> that consists in a triangulated area. Although a few years before, other large domes were built, uh, as marked at Basel by Dieschenhoff, but this dome by Torroja uh, has uh, a lot of innovation, different things. As you can see in the picture, uh, uh, up uh, is the Dischinger Basel, um, and this is uh, Torroja. Uh, the surface of the uh, concrete shell is continuous, no ribs. Uh, another thing is um, when you know, like Torroja, no? uh, how is the behavior, the structural behavior of the, of the geometric form you, you dream to build, um, you know uh, how to make it possible. So um, the um, cylindrical vault in the edges, this one, uh, they are, um, because it's a, a way, choose by Torroja, to get a stiffness uh, and more rigid the uh, concrete cell. Uh, also, um, in this, uh, this radius, iron radius, is uh, the same. It's not decorative. Uh, no, it's, um, it's uh, um, too rigid, again, um, the, the edge. Uh, okay. Uh, see, um, it's uh, the draw. Uh, public uh, by Torroja in, in the Institute, uh, and they uh, explain 
the other thing, uh, the innovation of this uh, shell, is uh, the ribs around uh, pillar to pillar, iron bars, and um, is um, a very special method to get um, out of the uh, form work the, the shell, the concrete shell, by tension uh, this um, cable, okay, this ring. Um, the thickness of the cell increased gradually from 9 centimeters to 50 centimeters on the pillar in order to resist the concentration stress. The pillar only resists the vertical loads. The horizontal thrust is balanced by the octagonal hoop, uh, the ring, uh, consisting in um, 16 steel rows. Well, there is a, a, a history. I, I told before, uh, Eduardo Torroja was free to build his own ideas because he built first a small um, model, reduced model. Um, this model was made by micro hormigon in a, a scale 110. And all was um, in a right way. Uh, this is a, a imagine of the model. Um, all um, confirm that the, the structural behavior is okay. But uh, somebody told me, uh, Eduardo Torroja will go out to take a sandwich. No? And when Torroja come back to the model, the model fall down. Uh, the problem was because um, the, the, the iron uh, get uh, longer by the formation and finally broke. Uh, so uh, Torroja um, uh, add more iron and big session uh, in, the, in the reality uh, construction. No? So Torroja always uh, show us the way, no? uh, the way and the problem. Uh, some people only talk about the, the good thing. No? What, what happens is, is need, we need to know no? uh, in order to um, value. Well, uh, the next uh, is the Hipódromo de la Zarzuela. All is in the um, certificates. And I think, I don't know, but I think maybe it's the favorite of Eduardo Torroja because his famous book, uh, Razón y Ser, uh, de los tipos estructurales, estructural types, uh, the image uh, in the cover is uh, from um, this uh, shell. This uh, concrete shell uh, is well, well known. It's formed by a two uh, hyperbolic se sector, uh, and the cantilever is 12.8 uh, uh, meters, and the thickness of this cell is only five centimeters in the edge and uh, 14 centimeters in the key arch. This, um, this geometry uh, gives a uh, light image, mm -hmm. not only reality. Uh, it was uh, a record of cantilever uh, at this moment. No? And um, the, uh, uh, well, um, the isostatic, uh, I are going to, no, okay, uh, no image. <laughs> the isostatic diagram is a set of arches in compression, which are in balance by a set of orthogonal cable in tension. In this case, Eduardo Torroja used full scale model because he, uh, he said he was uh, afraid, um, he wanted to know also 
the process of construction of this big cantilever. Uh, it was um, <coughs> no problem um, in this um, case. Well, this is the, the third most famous Eduardo Torroja um, concrete cell. It's the Fronton Recoletos. Um, and uh, it was finished in 1936. And um, unfortunately, it disappeared uh, from the Spanish War. This large cylindrical concrete cell consists of the intersecting of two cylindrical bowls supported at two end fechets at the wall. So um, it was uh, only eight centimeters thickness and 55 meters span. So it was a, a wall record again about the large cylindrical cell. Uh, in some way, again, a giant was born. In this case, uh, Eduardo Torroja also made uh, a reduced model. And um, in this case, some um, fissures, uh, like a hair, uh, a small, <laughs> uh, appear at the end, uh, in the, between um, the, the wall. These cells uh, is, uh, generate its geometric form by two cylindrical different diameter um, uh, intersection. And uh, another innovation is uh, it has a, a very big light um, in the direction of the generatrix of the cylinder. Um, the when fall down in in a few days before the war uh, was finished. It uh, was in 1939. Um, one bomb crashed um, in, in, in the middle. And because this is uh, like a pin, like a cell pin, no? uh, um, supported for two, uh, two uh, walls. So Eduardo Torroja was uh, thinking when this is the model um, down, you see, no, it's, it's, it is not the support like arc, it's um, a big, a, a bin uh, cell. See, um, uh, Torroja was, this is uh, the sad image no? after the war. Um, Torroja was thinking about uh, to uh, introduce our, uh, our rims, our ribs, uh, in order to um, to get uh, not fall down, no? uh, because uh, it's a different uh, structural behavior. If you um, take a hole here, uh, you only fall down this, not all. But it's, uh, I feel um, special, uh, it was about presagios no? by Torroja, because he uh, say he writes in the journal inf uh, Informes de la Construcción, I, uh, when fall down, I um, design in time of peace. Uh, and we, we, we cannot know, we are not able to know what uh, things men will invent, invent it to destroy it that men built? Mm? So, um, well, uh, this uh, is uh, another engineer, uh, a study um, with um, Eduardo Torroja at our university, is uh, Ildefonso Sánchez del Rio. Uh, he is a Pioneer also, and in the decade of uh, 20, um, he started to build uh, these um, umbrellas. Um, the 
fundamental eh, difference between eh, Eduardo Torroja and Sánchez del Río is Eduardo Torroja eh, follow, follow a scientific way, reduce model, you know, remember, and eh, Felix, eh, Sánchez del Río said, eh, I have to look for my own system design based in my knowledge. I, I, I don't uh, know too many things, uh, like my friend Torroja. And I have no, uh, uh, no knowledge to make Redus model. So, um, it's curious. He finds it in his own system design, with is the, the way I think ingenuity, ingen, uh, no? First, he chose a geometric structural shape that could be generated by a set of ribs, arch or beams, because ribs were possible to dimension and built by him. Secondly, one uh, on this set of ribs, he built a set of a small and light concrete layer. So, ribs a layer from, uh, form the total uh, surface of the roof. This was the system design uh, he used in the early umbrella, you can see, and in, in all uh, the work during 50 years. Uh, the first, um, you see here, uh, is um, with a radial um, ribs uh, springing from its capital and also other circular ribs to get its uh, stiffness. This set of ribs are covered by gaps between them with, in this case, lightweight fiber cement plates, one centimeter thick. But, um, because we have to, to go fast, uh, see this image. Hmm? Uh, it's uh, a lot of years uh, after, hmm? but it's the same system design. Uh, uh, Reefs, but now uh, this is, this is uh, Ildefonso Sánchez del Río. I think so happy no? in the last. This is the uh, concrete cell umbrella bigger in the world. Uh, its uh, diameter is uh, 40 meters and only uh, 4 centimeters thin. Uh, as you can see, the, the reefs now are uh, very small, the small session. The, um, the um, concrete cell is hanging from, the, um, from this. And um, the this, the problem, the size is uh, all different, no? But uh, the EISS, uh, the International Association for Cell Structure, funded by Eduardo Torroja in 1959, uh, chose one uh, cover uh, about these uh, umbrellas. Uh, well, um, Sánchez del Río, um, also patent a lot of um, uh, of um, elements, ceramic elements. But the most uh, relevant is uh, this one. He called corrugate elements, used to build a large span roof. Uh, as you can see in the picture, he patent different uh, size. Uh, to uh, 75 meters uh, span or uh, 100 or uh, 200 meters. The, um, it's similar, no, the same, to NERVI with reinforced uh, concrete. Mm -hmm. uh, Spain uh, was so poor, it's so poor. Uh, but we are rich about ceramic material, clay. 
So it's, it was very important, uh, the industry, um, this, this pattern, no? not only for uh, uh, this form, also for, for buildings. Uh, well, in order to explain uh, the system construction of Dobella, you can see this sample. It is a Dobella to build arch roof, uh, eight, uh, 80 um, meters span. It is 12 centimeters thickness. The Dobella um, size, in this case, um, is uh, six meters span, four meters large, and 1.20 meters high. The Dobella has several concrete ribs in order to get its stiffness. Two ribs arch situated near of the edges and 14 long, long, longitudinal ribs. Also, the Dobella have uh, a hook to join it. The, lo, the Dobella, uh, the process is uh, by the Dobella is joisting when the concrete is not yet finished. See unfinished section uh, in the draw. No? This. And uh, if finally, concrete of Dobella is made when Dobella is in a final position. So a concrete layer final is unit of the uh, Dobella. Well, this um, this was a dream, um, a dream by by Sánchez del Río. No, he all the time look at uh, Nervi, uh, and also uh, we have to remember that uh, these uh, fellows were looking for a new structural form, but so big, so light, so slender, and nude, no? because uh, modernity. Well, um, he, uh, Sanchez de Rio designed his system design uh, to design uh, um, 200 meters span, but never um, built. Um, like uh, the most giant no, uh, of the modernity uh, is the Senate of Paris, no, with Nervi, um, the consultant, and uh, well. Um, but uh, in, it is very important uh, that uh, Sanchez del Rio built um, his dream, no 200 meters, but 100 meters span. is in Oviedo, in Spain, uh, and um, it's a pity because uh, Eduardo Torroja all the time, when all the people uh, around this uh, topic, uh, he said that he believed uh, Sánchez del Río will get. Hmm? But uh, Eduardo Torroja was die in, in this uh, at this time, no? okay. Uh, this is um, uh, the Sanchez de Rio masterpiece. Um, is um, by erecting the roof, uh, Sanchez de Rio was able to prove his original system design could be used for large span. Oviedo Sport Pavilion roof is a continuous cylindrical barrel bowl corrugated cell. But um, we have to remember, it's a reef. No? It's not continuous. It's corrugated and also has reef. No? All the time it's the same things. No? Uh, well. um, uh, so on each um, side are formed by two corrugated arches seven meters weight and 19 meters span. They are articulate at the springing and continue as the crow. The roof cover a clear roof area, uh, 100 um, by 100 meters. The natural lights uh, come, come in through the vertical skylight resulting from difference of the height between the central and side cells. Uh, you can see um, opposite. 
this uh, innovate uh, cell was uh, again it chose uh, by a cover to the journal of the years. It was difficult to get it. Well, and um, the third uh, fellow, the third master, a Spanish master in concrete cell, is a uh, well known, Felix Candela. Felix Candela um, is uh, younger than the other people. Felix Candela um, studied at the University in Madrid uh, also. At the same time that Eduardo Torroja and Ildefonso Sánchez de Rio was uh, build, uh, building uh, his uh, um, concrete cell. Um, after the Spanish War in 1939, he sailed to Mexico. And uh, after too many problems no? uh, in Mexico. Um, in 1950, he formed his own company in Mexico, Cubierta Sala. And uh, in less than two decades, built um, over 800 concrete cells. It's the bigger no? um, set of, uh, of concrete um, a cell in the world. Um, it's by Candela, 800. Uh, Candela uh, play uh, without a doubt, uh, one of the most prominent roles in the modern architecture a uh, concrete cell adventure. Uh, his international uh, fame was based in, in a special way, different way, a scientific way, Torroja, ingenious, Way, um, um, Sanchez del Rio, and uh, Candela is uh, um, always um, Bellington in Princeton University. Uh, all the people say is uh, a structural art, the way of the structural art. His architect, no engineer, um, Eduardo Torroja, um, Sanchez del Rio are engineer. Well, I think the three are uh, are master. Okay. Well, uh, uh, this is the, the way, no? But um, Candela, um, because a war, a Spanish war, is sent to Mexico, uh, he said, I have no time. I have to learn fast. So I cannot uh, calculate um, like German people. I cannot, uh, German people, I cannot make a scientific model reduced that, no. So, I am going to make a medieval master building cathedral, Gothic cathedral. And um, he um, built uh, in a full scale. No? And because Eduardo Torroja say, no? and you know, all, all of us, no? uh, each geometric form uh, produced different uh, structural behavior. So, uh, when he changed the geometric form, he, he built uh, a model. Uh, he used a catenary, conoides, uh, too many things. But finally, he fell down uh, in love uh, with the paraboloide hyperbolico, uh, parabolic uh, hyperbolic. Because uh, it was. Uh, the geometric form, uh, the best, no? the best about a uh, construction process because um, have a, a strain line generated. No? Uh, so you, uh, you can make a, a boot as a form work by boot. No? Uh, the process uh, of construction is uh, easy. The, um, uh, rigid is uh, because it's double cu uh, curvature, and uh, it was very cheap uh, in, at Mexico in the uh, 50 decades. No? Okay, um, this is uh, a structural art. Um, I think so, um, but uh, structural art. Uh, 
for me uh, also to Roja, also. No? All are um, uh, mixed. But uh, as I am going to tell you no? some small detail, uh, I think is uh, really different in some way. Um, th this image um, are as a sc a sculptural no? in a big side. No? Some like this is La Iglesia de la Milagrosa is uh, to see uh, inside. Another is uh, more sculptural if you uh, see outside. No? All are uh, paraboloide hyperbólico. Well, um, the umbrellas, as you know, are the largest legacy by uh, Felix Candela. He designed it uh, and built more than 1,600 uh, umbrellas. So umbrella uh, was the image of his company, Cubierta Salas, in Mexico, at Mexico. See the Christmas by his company, uh, up. As you know, umbrellas are the result of the cross of four parabol parabolic, hyperbolic, and they have a pillar in the center as support. Also, the foundation uh, was by concrete umbrella because it is good, a structural geometric form and incorporation. Nevertheless, he built very different umbrellas and eccentric um, ones, a set strain by line with a step, or with a small glass light, or separate and with different size. So uh, he used his imagination, his creativity, to design different architectural space. And he got it. Got it. The, um, this church, Milagrosa Church, um, Felix Candela used um, um, umbrella to generate uh, the space. An eccentric umbrella appear, appear dancing. First umbrella turn its head back. After another identical umbrella appear, and then they dance together and unit its edges. This is the way used by Candela to generate the architectural space of the church. These two umbrellas generate a module which, uh, from the principal nave of the church. In the same way, Candela generate the lateral and the smaller naves. See now the image of the interior. It's really an, an sculpture, no? The detail... Um, about how Candela unit concrete shell roof with the pillar. It is fantastic, you know? He used the same uh, geometric form. It uh, appears like uh, one thing, no two elements, no roof mm, mm, at support. It's, it's uh, uh, only one thing, you know? appear, we fell like one thing. Uh, the other uh, famous uh, Candela work, and maybe uh, his favorite, so it was the restaurant Los Manantiales in Xochimilco. Its geometry form was generated by the cross of uh, four identical hyperbolic parabolic. It is an octagonal cell about the edges are hyperbolas because the paraboloid, the, uh, the hyperbolic, were cut by inclined plants. So, uh, nevertheless, the diameter is uh, 30 meters. The cell covers 42 meters in diameter. This fact may make it appear bigger and slenderness. It uh, only has uh, four centimeters thickness. The edges. Uh, are free, they have the same thickness of the total cell surface. As you know, the necessary ribs are inside of the total thickness, four centimeters, and they are simu situated in the intersection uh, between each eight epoch. Um, the cell appear like 
only undulation again no? it's only one thing um, well um, on the other hand um, the very no ten years no no uh, two years before René Sacher um, uh, built uh, the royal market no it's a fantastic cell, but uh, I want to comment because the different, no? the geometric form are different. So it's more expensive this uh, way because you need arches to the form work, see, or a, 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 a strain line, no? and this uh, we need. Arches, it's different. Uh, well, this is um, a model we we made in, in the exhibition um, we made at my university about uh, Felix Candela. No? It's to show uh, to the student, student um, the generate uh, of the form geometry form, and only one detail. No? Are detail. See this. No? Um, it's like um, the the concrete cell mm, does not introduce inside the pillar. No, um, the the shell um, is on the pillar. But uh, see, show us. Uh, is light. Is light and also uh, presume, no? um, so, so us. And again, um, also, is a very good construction um, detail because the water, rain water, come down and no go uh, of the surface of the pillar. Uh, because cantilever um, enough. And this is my last slice. Um, this is um, a commemoration shell at the Instituto founded by Eduardo Torroja in the year 1934, um, <laughs> founded, but this build, uh, set of building and now it's the same place. It was in, uh, in 1953. But in this garden, in this place, Eduardo Torroja uh, received um, and celebrated with um, all the people, Nervi, um, Paduar, Salvadori, uh, Hostorf, um, everybody uh, who was master builder of Concrecel. Because in this garden they celebrate uh, the EISS, the International Association for Cell uh, Structure, was born. And uh, ten years after, um, they built uh, this uh, concrete cell. It wa uh, was designed and built by Jose Antonio Torroja, son of Eduardo Torroja, and Fernando Casinello, my father. Uh, in this garden, uh, mm, the adventure uh, this year, no? in this garden, uh, the adventure uh, of concrete structure was finished. Other structural uh, age started, no? light structure, no? compression structure, uh, tension structure, freyoto slice, new materials, cable, glass, uh, the International uh, Association for Cell Structure decided to change its name, although no, in its initial, to International Association for Cell and Spatial Structure, uh, like to, you know what is name. Uh, well, um, bearing in mind that uh, if you come to Madrid, uh, we will receive you. We are waiting for you in this uh, garden, and 
this is a very nice place to remember uh, this adventure, you know, a, a brave professional. Uh, that's all. Thank you very much for your attention. Dieste has a, a sculptural work, continuum work. Sancho del Rio never leaves his reefs uh, all the time. It's a different uh, structural behavior. It's a different process of construction. We have no time, but uh, he all the time um, design also a form work, mobile, you know, different in each work. So uh, it's a different process, different, and uh, usually uh, he uh, use uh, only concrete. Only this uh, patent uh, is with clay, material, ceramic, and uh, also concrete. So I think it's uh, Morandi say, no? uh, I think uh, these fellows, were free because they uh, were free by knowledge. And they choose, you know, I like this, I like this way, it's easier for me. Uh, no, I think so. We, we like uh, to be free, to choose. And, uh, I don't know, uh, but I think it's, it's different ways and also result no? by yesterday. <laughs> I don't know if the answer. Is there any Yeah, actually, my question is um, do you know if there are architects or engineers that use the dimensions of um, these men that you have presented um, today um, for buildings of, of, uh, nowadays? Nowadays, a concrete cell. Do you? Yeah, or of the ceramics um, that you have shown us. Uh, nowadays, the problem is uh, okay. Uh, nowadays, uh, the problem is uh, uh, sustainability. <laughs> well, I explain. No? Um, concrete cell and ceramic cell needs too much um, operarios, um, workers, no? okay. Uh, Felix Candela uh, win one, too much money. No? But in the 69 was the year. Um, chain, um, the ministry, the uh, government, uh, the salary was up. No? So it um, was different. Also, after that, the um, 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 uh, you need in uh, when you uh, build, you need security for the worker. No, uh, in this year, security. Mexicano, no, was very So uh, more expensive. So no economical. So uh, they was free, but free to be economical, because if not economical, you uh, only uh, find one fellow uh, if you want to spend it in your ideas. No? 
So, eh, I explain lo de eh, sostenible, no? sostenibility. Eh, now, we... Nowadays, everybody in, Alge in Algeciras eh, get up and go to the market, Valto Roja, to buy the food. Hmm? Eh, it's okay, it's a market. But eh, the necessity of the eh, insulate, hmm? The concrete, uh, mm, very slender, a thickness, uh, is uh, no mm, sostenible. Mm. But uh, my slides, you know, the uh, Technologica Polytechnic at Berlin, my slides um, tell uh, of the time is uh, richer about a new um, uh, a concrete. Um, a light concrete, very, very light uh, concrete. And um, maybe uh, we can get with more thickness uh, the insulati we need mm, to don't spend in uh, energy, mm, for example. On the other uh, hand, the clay the need too much work to make this uh, dovela. You know, so it's uh, expensive. I think it's uh, all the, this thing. So now you prefabricate uh, by industry a big, uh, a big uh, piece in, in other materials, mm -hmm. in fever, and, mm -hmm. and so the process of construction, the society, uh, the economical uh, situation and the, the, the demand of the planet uh, ask for architect and engineer new uh, things. So we have to, to think about this. <laughs> I think so. Okay, thank you very much Pepe, for this presentation, which I really appreciate it much. I just wanted also to give some, I would say, another point of view on this last question mm -hmm. because I fully agree with what you have said that uh, actually uh, while there was all this uh, shell construction which was very active and then it really depressed and nothing was done, mm -hmm. as you said probably there were sustainability problems, there were also cost and form working and all the stuff that became governing. And I, I have to admit that when I studied, because I also studied uh, at Madrid, uh, it was quite frustrating that uh, we have no uh, lessons on shells. So we were always seeing these masterworks, this stuff, but we never uh, were taught how could we do shells. As a consequence of what you said, that actually they were no longer used. I have to admit that nowadays, it is this uh, situation is now changing, changing a bit. Yeah, there are new materials, as you have said, uh, lightweight uh, concrete, also the fiber reinforced concrete, and there are also new technologies for uh, form working. So there are laser cut of form working, there are assemblies cut, assemblies of form working. So there are new technologies that are now uh, developing. And now it is becoming again as an actual question if it is really sustainable because the the amount of material we are using uh, is really very reduced with respect to other yeah. bending uh, yeah. based yeah. Uh, solutions. So yeah. now there is a debate on if these shells are being, uh, I would say, uh, a, a solution, a, a state-of-the-art solution to, to cover roofs or, or many problems. And I have to admit that actually there are now, in, at least in Europe, there, there have been uh, two or three projects that have been built recently in the last yeah. two or three years that point towards this direction. So I would, I would like to, to know if uh, in 10 years' time there will be an, again uh, uh, some topic for the students who shell design. No? So yeah. I, I think teaching is always related also to what are the needs. So perhaps we will see yeah. something uh, yeah. like a new, uh, a new rise of, of these structures. No? Yeah. Uh, but I think uh, if we uh, shell can um, come back, mm -hmm. but other cells, uh, 
other materials with other um, a process of construction. And I think um, you are right. Uh, the um, university lesson are not um, always, but sometimes uh, also we listen lesson when we um, are outside of the university. We miss no? the lesson, and when we uh, stay, you no, know, we have no time to listen. No, maybe, but uh, I am sure um, it's uh, all the time our work. Architect and engineer is looking for a new age, new structural age, new material, new. Um, I think it's our dream all the time. Yes, I'm, I'm also quite convinced that the concrete sheds are coming back for, for many reasons. Sustainability yeah. is, yeah. Is, a, is an important, but also costs are are. Uh, interesting again because there are new techniques yeah. for instance yeah. producing the scaffolding yeah. and uh, more insulate and yes mic yes. slices yes. the winner now I am uh, surprised yeah. about uh, yes. this material there are, there are some new, new ideas yeah. which will change uh, I, yeah. I think the, the, the way building shall and also and also the approaches by by juniors are, are changing because I think it was very interesting to see that there were in fact, there are two completely different approaches. Yeah. Mishing, uh, 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 Toroja, uh, a very scientific, yeah. scientific approach which yeah. was based on geometric yeah. uh, 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 shapes. Yeah. And we have seen uh, uh, other examples. Uh, Isler, uh, Isler. Isler very, yeah. very clearly yeah. into this, this school. Again, very, very completely different. Nothing yeah. with scientific approach, very intuitive yeah. approach, yeah. and uh, with very simple uh, considerations about about uh, equilibrium. And Candela, I, th I think he was a little bit in between, in fact. Yes. Because because he has a very yes. very rigid approach for shapes, yeah. but. Uh, it was again very based on, on, on experience and, uh, yeah. and trial and error. What, 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 there, there were some mistakes in the Cornawaka chapel was so. a little bit uh, of all. I, I think engineers are they have nowadays new tools in designing uh, uh, shells and I think this is another reason why they will come back in my opinion. Because the we have we have, now we have new tools yeah. in order to to, to design uh, this uh, this. Uh, yes, I think uh, when engineer and architect we work together, we get the best. And only a master builder, I say master builder, was uh, they built the Gothic cathedral, the best with a stone. I think. And uh, the skycrawler needs engineer architect. A concrete cell generally uh, architect and engineer. So I think we have uh, to work together, more together. No? <laughs> then another question? I think you had a very good conclusion <laughs> tonight. Uh, this is something we have already heard, but uh, we have to. We see that there is a, also a, a practice. And uh, well, I thank you again, Marcia and Peppa, for uh, sharing your enthusiasm on these uh, master builders. And um, I thank you. It was a very good contribution on our lecture series uh, on. Um, engineers that are also designers uh, and so the next one next week is the next um, rendezvous on Friday we'll have a presentation on Elado Dieste by Professor Chiorino uh, so we already talked a bit about Elado Dieste but we are looking forward to, to discovering his work and sorry Wednesday, Wednesday. Yeah. Sorry, it's on Wednesday. Sorry, exactly. <laughs>
Wednesday. And uh, also, um, Professor Moutoni will talk about uh, Robert Maillard. Pepa said that uh, uh, in Spain you speak a lot, you study a lot Robert Maillard, oh, yeah. and maybe not enough in Switzerland, but next week we'll have a presentation yeah. of Robert Maillard and the Swiss continent. So I wish you a very good uh, evening. Thank you for your presence, and see you next week. Thank you.